Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Aspire. I'm Vikram and here I am at the Grand Hyatt in Mumbai looking at a fashion event that's about to unfold and I'll tell you more about it in just a moment. But first, here's what's on the show. If you're into sports, we're telling you what the luxury brands have to offer this season. The latest from the world of tech and which one's better, a tablet or the e-reader? And from the world of couture, it's the biggest designers and their love for design that takes them beyond the world of couture. But before we get down to any of that, here's the buzz of the week. Making waves at the LA Motor Show last week. The world debut of Range Rover's Land Rover Long Wheelbase Autobiography Black Edition. At $185,000 and only 100 in number, this luxurious set of wheels has massage seats and a champagne cooler apart from full leather interiors. We hear that the first 25 cars will be made in a special Veloia white color and will come at a price tag of nearly $200,000 US dollars. The world of art has seen a record break. Three studies of Lucian Freud. This 1969 painting by Irish-born artist Bacon sold for a whopping $142 million within six minutes of bidding at Christie's in Manhattan. The painting is now the most expensive artwork ever sold at an auction. If you're one for travel, check this out. The Johnny Walker Alfred Dunhill Traveler's Trunk. 500 pieces of this limited edition trunk, designed by Dunhill, carries a limited edition bottle of the whiskey, glasses, a funnel, ice tongs, and a hunter flask. The price tag five and a half lakh rupees. Here on Aspire, we've been keeping you on top of all developments in the world of fashion. At this point in time, we are following this trend where fashion designers are taking it way beyond couture. We're telling you why. The mood as soulful as ever. The models deadpan in their expression. The audience seeking that spark of brilliance. Being at a fashion show, taking in the designs, one pauses to wonder if much has changed over the three decades or so of Indian fashion that finds wedding couture at the heart of it. At the Blender's Pride fashion tour, I'm watching J.J. Balaya's collection, which he calls Maharaja of Madrid, where Indian regalia plays with Spanish influences. Sure, it speaks of Indian design looking west. It also speaks of a designer who works at taking his label beyond couture and pret lines. Most recently, he diversified into home decor with this store called Home of the Traveller. Question is, what spurs him to go beyond core expertise? If you look at any international fashion house, whether it's a Ralph Lauren or an Armani or a Fendi, they're and enough examples, they've all sort of gone into territories more than fashion. We are no exception, we are a young industry in India, but uh, we are definitely an old brand when it comes to fashion. And uh, it's been two decades of being in the fashion industry and now we're branching out very aggressively into the home territory. And which means that we've already uh, launched a sub brand of ours called the Home of the Traveler, which is a complete experience curated by me. We are in spring 2014 going to launch uh, Valaya Home, uh, which is going to be an uber luxury sort of brand for absolutely signature interiors, bespoke and very, very high end. Valaya tells me that the aspirational Indian loves to flaunt. And so for designers like him, being in the business of weddings and homes makes perfect business sense. He's not alone. Designer Sabhisachi Mukherjee has taken the interior design route to expand his label. Not only has he designed his own stores, India's Taj Group had him design a suite for their 51 Buckingham Gate property in London last year. Called the Cinema Suite, it brings together the history of cinema. 
not just Indian cinema, mind you, but movie influences from around the world. It's a myth that fashion designers can only design clothes because when you're a designer, your lateral mobility of labor is very high, which means with proper expertise, you can design just about anything. Right now, I'm designing jewelry because jewelry was my first love. I got into jewelry before I got into clothes, so I'm getting back into it again. And of course, filmmaking. That's been a big passion. I've written a script, waiting for the right producer. Maybe in two or three years' time, when the business settles down, I'll get back into doing films again. Yes, it could be a personal passion, but more likely, the need to evolve and capture a larger audience. To be available at every touch point in a fast-growing luxury market. The avenues for a global platform are many, like collaborations with other luxury players. Tarun Dahliani seems to have mastered this. This limited edition gift box for Johnny Walker. This blingy television set for VIEW Technologies. Bridal jewellery for World Gold Council's brand Asva or jewellery watches for Timex all carry his brand name. In fact, couturier Sunit Varma is a big part of this trend of fashion designers who take their brand ahead through collaboration into a wider audience. With 25 years in the industry now, Sunit still designs for his own label, taking care of all the creative details. But he also conceives and constructs handbags for iconic brand Judith Lieber. I ask him if such collaborations make a whole lot of business sense. I actually didn't treat my business and I still don't treat my business necessarily only like a business. A 50 crore, a 100 crore or 200 crore may not necessarily be the target I'm chasing every year. Uh, I don't chase that, I chase something else altogether. Mm. I love absolutely what I do because I think I'd be terrible at everything else. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know, haven't left much room for everything else. Uh, but well, what I see right now, Sunny, it's you, you, you're doing those wonderful handbags with Judith Lieber. Yes. Um, you have a tie-up where uh, you're getting Armani Jr. down and there is the tie-up with BMW as well. So, right. I mean, Swarovski has been there, you've done several of these so you covered most ground and even in the hotel business i'm yes, seeing you the, the doing Devrana, stuff for, yes. uh, for the devrana but i didn't really plan that you know i'm going to go and do this so you know when this uh, the armani junior thing came along i about five years ago when emporio the first luxury mall in india opened in Mum in delhi uh, you know we saw all the big brands from gucci to you know armani to prada all of them are there and then, then I suddenly noticed that, you know, everyone's shopping and carting their children around and leaving the children and the maids in the cafe. And I thought, well, you know, at some point I was sitting there and there were like about 16 or 17 kids running around. I said, well, there should be something for the children to buy as well. Then the mothers wouldn't feel so guilty buying those shoes. You were thinking business <laughs> at that time. Well, I, I was thinking of doing something creative, something new to do. Um, and yeah, so I just approached Armani and I, you know, went to see them. And they were very, uh, very forthcoming and they were very excited. They said, you know, sounds like a great idea and uh, give us a business plan, give us your thoughts. I came back, did a whole research on children's way in this country. What kind of research did you do for Judith Lieber? Because those handbags uh, really got you the kind of attention on an international platform. They liked my embroideries and they felt that the clothes that I did which were very feminine or very pretty or had a lot of Swarovski or very sort of delicate embroidery sort of befitted the entire Judith Lieber customer profile as well. So I said I'd like to but I'd like to know more about it. Why they last a hundred years you know and why they are the world's number one brand. So I asked them to bring me to America and I spent about three weeks in their factory understanding and then I went to Swarovski at Austria because you know I know Swarovski about so on you know, I don't know about how it is to make it to a hard surface, onto leather, onto metal. It changes completely. It completely changes. The application changes. Uh, it lasts. It has a completely different dimension. You collaborated, and that's the main story over here because that's a route that you've taken. Right. Whether you started off by working with an Yves Saint Laurent or you went ahead and tied up with a Judith Lieber. Yes. Uh, those were choices. So you as a fashion designer decided to collaborate with another fashion house. Well, now you know, that's an important decision yeah, to you make. Know, for me, I, I could have gone another route. I could have said, you know, I'm going to open 10 stores or 20 stores or got a major investor. And we have a lot of investors who are interested in my brand. So when a BMW comes and says, you know, will you design the interiors of a new 7 series? I'm like, wow, I know nothing about cars. So there's something new to learn for me. So they take me to Munich, I spent three months in Munich, I'm talking to the topmost car designers in the world and I'm learning something new right. and, and it's, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge high for me 
to be able to go that route. It doesn't take away from uh, the brand uh, that you're creating around yourself? No, I think it adds to my brand. The very fact that Sunit Farma is doing Judith Liba, or Sunit Farma is bringing Armani, you know, to sit next to Armani and to be able to talk to them about a business plan in India, it's a huge... Uh... But the point is that when those celebrities are carrying those Menodiers, yes, uh, going for these events, right. they're still carrying a Judith Lieber bag. Yes. Well, yes. inside it says Sunit Parma for <laughs> Judith Lieber. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't open the bag and say, Well, you know, when, when, sex, when Sex in the City was being done, I was in New York for the promotion of that, and uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, they actually sent me to meet her at her house. She lived in the village. And uh, she saw my bag and she said, You know, it's very unlike anything I've done with Lieber. Will you actually do all the Lieber bags for the entire premieres of Sex and City the world over. And I said, I'd love to. And at one point, uh, I got a call from Mariah Carey and Jennifer Lopez's uh, PR agent, because I have a PR agent in New York as well. That will you actually do the stuff for them? I said, I'd be more than happy to. So, you know, for me, my ego is not much larger than, let's say, what I bring to the table. I don't necessarily want to get the Oscar. I'm happy to see my product on the person getting the Oscar. So you're looking at these markets getting opened up more and more with your efforts, with the kind of collaborations that you're doing, is that the route you'll keep charting? Because we hear about this private equity interest which right. you just mentioned yes. as well in your brand and obviously there is going to be a lot of that activity too right. looking at the way the industry is developing. Right. So how are you going to take it ahead? Well, you know, we've had a lot of interest in that and uh, there's a lot of people who uh, come up to us and my office is talking to them. I have a very strong management and actually a finance team. So I actually don't manage any of that. I mean, to give an example, I once passed, passed a math exam. I think in seventh class in my school, the whole school got a retest. So <laughs> they're like, if the Varma boy passed the math exam, there must be something wrong with the paper. So <clears throat> obviously I'm not the one to talk to the equity guys, but yes. We have a team who does all of that and actually, you know, they're doing their job and I'm doing mine. It's a very well entrenched business. There's a management side, there's a finance side, there's a design side. So I only manage that part. What is your primary market? What is the profile of this person? So this person is definitely, um, uh, it's a woman to begin with. It's women's wear. She's uh, definitely well traveled. She's, uh, she's fairly well off. Uh, she can afford to spend upwards of 800 to uh, you know 1500 dollars on an outfit how much of this market is in india i would say probably 60 percent more and more people buy us most certainly and i think it may have to do with the collaborations may have to do with the awareness of the brand if you're into sports what do the luxury brands have on offer this season we'll tell you in tech, we get you all the buzz. And if you enjoy reading, should you go for a tablet or an e-reader? That's coming up.